I want you to remember the number line. We've seen the number line before. Here's a number line. Missing some things though. What could I put onto this to make it a little more complete? Uh, yeah, Jaren, what do you reckon? Numbers. No, <laughs> numbers would be good to put on number line. What's the most important number on the number line? Zero. Frank, zero. zero. It's zero. Very good. Now I could, I can put zero wherever I like. What a nice, sensible place is to put it. In the middle, very good. So I'm going to put it, uh, where is my centre? I've got an even number. So I'm going to put it there. Yeah, that's fine. Now we, we as a convention, we say, okay, going to the right, our numbers get bigger, larger. Okay, so I'll go one, two, three, four. I've chosen one, two, three, and four. I could have chosen like five, 10, 15, 20, 10, 20, whatever I like, as long as they're consistent. If they're getting bigger this way, that means they're getting smaller that way. So I'm going to go... Yeah, negative one, negative two, negative three. So here's our integer language coming in, right? Lovely. But yesterday you noticed, right, that when you want to like represent something in space, okay, we live like if you want to draw a map, okay, this, which is one dimensional, maybe you want to write that down. This is one dimensional. There's only one direction you can go back and forth in, okay? Kind of doesn't cut it. It's kind of not enough, right? So what if we wanted, what if we added um, a dimension? So that we have something which is two dimensional. Well, you can see here's a number line over here. And all I need to do to add an extra direction there is to say, well, here's left, right. Here's left, right. Let's have up, down. Okay, so I'm going to put a line straight through. So now I've got two number lines, right? Each number line represents a dimension. So now I've got something which is two-dimensional. This is two-dimensional. Now, just like before, right? I still got all my numbers here. In fact, let's let's mark them in. I've still got zero right there in the middle. I've got one, two, three going this way. I've got negative one, negative two, negative three going this way. But now I have this extra number line hanging around and I want to be able to describe where I am on that one as well. So it needs numbers <laughs> too. So just like I've got left to right, let's put some markings here. One, two, three will do. One, two, three. Now, just like before, we said, okay, let's make this direction get bigger, the positive direction. And let's make this direction get smaller, the negative direction. Which would you like me to make positive and which one negative? Which do you think makes sense, Darcy? Negative down. Yeah, let's go negative down and positive up. Um, you don't have to define it that way, but if we're on the same system, that will make sense. I already have zero in there, right at the middle. Going, climbing up, one, two, and three. Climbing down, negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay. Now, when you have a look at this, we've now introduced a whole new massive a uh, really fun idea, okay? This is not a number line anymore. It's got two dimensions, it takes up 2D space. So we call it... A number plane. A number plane. So, oh, here's my... Uh, the heading is number plane. Number plane has two dimensions, as you can see over there. It's what happens when you put two number lines together and they're, um, they're perpendicular, they're at right angles. Okay. So. When you got two of them, we give them special names. Do you notice the way I've drawn it? It's quite symmetrical. Do you see that? There's like the, the right hand side and the left hand side to get the same. You got the top half, bottom half, exactly the same. Think back, think back to geometry. When you've got a shape and it's exactly the same on both sides, we say it has what kind of symmetry? Because there's more than one kind of symmetry. Does anyone remember? We, ooh. Interestingly, I can rotate this around, but if I've got, like, say, my face, right, which is eye over here, over here, ear over here, ear over here, etc., what do we call that? Reflection. Yeah, good. I can reflect across. We didn't say rotation before, okay? So, when you've got something which has reflectional symmetry, or, or this way as well, what do we call that middle line? It has a special name, starts with an A. Does anyone remember? We call it an axis of symmetry. So I have an axis up here, right? This up-down one, it's an axis. But I also have this one going across. It's also an axis, okay? So because I've got two axes, axes is the plural, by the way. You might want to drop that. Bless you. Bless you. 
axes is the, um, what did I just say? Is the, plural. Uh, plural, that's right. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> of axis. Yeah, it is spelled exactly the same as like axes, like as in like throwing axes, but it's axes, okay? I've got two axes over here. I want to be able to distinguish between them. So we give them names. Yeah, Christian. Okay, so we call them the X axis and the Y axis. They're our axes. We name them in this order alphabetically because we usually start with this horizontal one, right? So X comes first in the alphabet. And then we're like, oh, let's add on this extra idea, an extra dimension, an extra axis up this way, and Y comes after. Okay. So this one first, then that one. Okay, now just like before, we want to be able to describe places like on a map, okay? Thank you. If, if we had to do it one at a time, would it stop A? You mean like an A axis and a B axis? Is that yes. what you're talking about? Yeah. So, you know, we're calling them X and Y. Um, sometimes you'll have different things that these numbers are referring to. Like they might be time or temperature or kilometers or any other quantities you want to compare. This is a really huge idea. It goes all over the place. So you call them anything you like. But let's just try and get some common language first. So X is usually the number we have for like an unknown. So that's why I'm starting with X. All right, so we've got axes on our number plane. Another important thing is if I want to be able to describe a place, like say, hey, that spot over there, right? Like that's on a map. How would you describe that, right? So, let's get here down for a second. We use, just like with the maps you looked at yesterday, we use coordinates. And you should, um, you should underline that phrase. Coordinates. I'll talk about it in a second. To describe places or points on the plane. Oops. There we go. Okay. By the way, we do mean plane as in like a flat surface as opposed to plane like I'm on a plane. Okay. So we use coordinates to describe these points. Okay. Now you can see if you've got a number for how far across you are an x number, and if you've got a number for how up and down you are, that's a y number, then that's all the numbers you need. You just need two numbers, and that'll describe you everywhere. And that's why they're called coordinates, right? When you see the word ordinate, ordinate, it really just means like a value. Okay? Like we say ordinal sort of values, ordinal data, it means something which has a number on it. When you see the word co on the front of a word, like cooperate or co interior, or can someone give me some more examples? Someone give me another? Yeah. Co, co leaders? Okay, yeah. Okay, coordinates, alright. Uh, co pilots, co okay. What does that mean? What does that mean? Second. Does it? It usually means two, but importantly, two that are together. Yeah, if you're cooperating, Right? You're working together. If you've got coordinates, you've got values that are together. Okay? So, coordinates always come in pairs, as we will mention. Nikhil, question. Collinear a real thing? Yes, yes. Collinear means together on a. What do you think linear means? Linear. Linear? It means together on a line, right? So, for example, uh, these guys here. They're all collinear, right? Uh, and there's all kinds of things that are similar. Okay. So I just need two numbers, and here's the way we write our coordinates. So you can write them up here with this guy, right? Oops, wrong color. Because we try and keep things alphabetical so we don't get confused, okay? We'll give an X number first and then a Y number. We'll keep that alphabetical, right? So this guy, what's the X number that matches up to one. that point? One. It's one, just two. one, isn't it? In fact, you may like to draw some little dots there so you can see it goes down to one. So I've got a one. And then I'm like, okay, now give me the Y number. So I'll put a comma. What's the Y number that fits? Yeah. Two. Two, very good. So I can see that just there. One, comma, two. And I've got these round brackets here. They're actually called parentheses that indicate, hey, this isn't just a random pair of numbers, they're coordinates. They tell me where to go. Okay. Now, uh, remember I asked you before, which is the most important number on the number line? Which is it? Zero. Zero, right? It's this guy here. Okay. So what do you think is the most important 
set of coordinates on the number plane. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Very good. So maybe you want to draw an arrow in there because probably if yours like, is like mine, the center of your plane is quite busy. So draw an arrow up there. This is zero, zero, right? You need two numbers. One to tell you don't go left or right and the other one to go don't go up or down. Just stay there. It's so important we give it a whole special name. We call it origin. the origin. It's where everything starts. You know, if you're counting this way or that way or this way or that way, you start counting, you start from the origin, and then you go. Okay? All right, so now on this same axis, right, let's see if we get this idea. You could tell me this point where it is. I'm going to tell you some coordinates, and I want you to tell me where I should draw the dot. Okay? How about this? Pause for a minute, don't shout it out. I want you to think, how would you describe verbally how to get to this spot? Beth, what do you reckon? Along the x-axis to negative three. Okay, so I'm going one, two, three over to the left, good. Yep, then up um, on the y-axis on one. Here? Yes. Like that, what do we think? Yes. Thumbs up, cool. And you can see, you might like to draw in again, these dots here. Then you can, okay, I'm there, I'm there, negative three. One. Awesome. Okay. Can you remind me again? How did I know to go negative three to the left and not negative three down? Why not? Why not do that one first? Why not, Aaron? Yeah, I'm doing things alphabetically. Okay, alphabetically. So you do x first, then you do y. Okay. 